Okay, uh, this is Pat Rector, Chair of the Amherst Council on Aging and pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, section 30, uh, 30A, GLC 30A, section 18, this meeting of the Council on Aging is being conducted via remote participation. Um, I want to do a roll call of our members, and this will give you a chance to uh, check your uh, and practice your mute and unmute um, um, buttons. Uh, Rosemary Koffler. Present. Susan Dirks. Can't hear you, Susan. Yes. Okay. Okay. Here. Now we can hear. Yes. Good. Jack? I'm here. Wollensack. Oh, wonderful, Jack. Um, Yvette Palacine? Here. <clears throat> and uh, Jacqueline Smith Crooks? Here. Greg Bascom? Here. Wonderful, thank you. And Timothy Neal? I'm here as well, and I have a request. I seem to have an old list of board members. Could some, Mary Beth or somebody print, uh, send us out a new list with all the emails and stuff on it? That would be great. I Thank you. Okay, okay that's really great. Um, I would also welcome, uh, warmly welcome any guests and visitors. Um, and um, I'd like to remind everyone uh, visiting that uh, if, um, if you can, if you're dialing in by phone, you can press star nine to raise your hand to speak. Um, if people are using a computer or tablet, they should click on the raise hand button at the bottom of their screen um, or uh, to let the chair know when they want to speak. Um, I always encourage people to mute themselves um, and uh, this is true council members certainly uh, to uh, and all of us uh, when you're not speaking um, and you can unmute uh, unmute when you have been identified um, after ha raising your hand or just signaling that you'd like to speak um, so um, let's see um, you should have all have received the agenda and minutes and um, I'd now like to transition uh, to any visitors who are here. Uh, any visitors who wish to speak now, they could, um, they could do so. Um, you can speak up to uh, three minutes. And, um, and we will, uh, we, well, the board, uh, the council will not engage in any dialogue with you, but we're certainly eager for your comments and perspectives. So is there anyone? would like to speak. There is Pat. Um, Liz Welsh from Amherst Neighbors is here and I'm going to click allow to talk. I just want right. to her before. Lovely. There we go. Liz, you should be all set. Although I see it looks like you're muted. There we go. There you go. I think we've got you, Liz. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to say hello. I'm really happy to be a part of kind of listening in on your meeting today and hearing um, uh, kind of the up-to-date news from the Senior Center. That's wonderful. We're thrilled to have you, Liz, and uh, um, I'm so glad. Uh, I look forward to a time when we can uh, chat at social distance with masks, but yeah. happily connect with one another. So we'll make that happen. We will um, make that happen. Absolutely. I'm so impressed. I see Example visions of uh, your work everywhere in town, and I think that's wonderful. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move towards our uh, along uh, for our uh, through our agenda, and um, I let's let's just start start uh, war uh, enthusiastically with updates on operations and programming uh, with Mary Beth. Thank you, Pat. Um, a couple, a couple of things uh, that I just wanted to share with you, as you read in the recent newsletter that was sent out, um, 
I know that initially it was indicated to the community more broadly that uh, there would be an opportunity to revisit whether we would open um, at Labor Day, and that appears to not be happening. So the Bank Center will continue to be closed as well as the Senior Center until at this time we're looking at at least to the first of the year, possibly longer, depending on, again, what happens with the virus and the risk of transmission. So I just wanted that to be a really clear message folks, you know, continue to contact us. People are very eager to return. And I think more importantly, not to this place, but to community and seeing each other. So uh, that's certainly something that we're all hoping to be able to facilitate. And we're doing a little bit in small measures. Uh, we, I just had my first uh, in-person, we did outdoor yoga and meditation, and it was just fabulous to see each other. We did it socially distanced and masked in a small group. Um, and so to the extent that we're able to do that, we're also still, if folks need to access us, we are um, meeting with people one-to-one -one outside. So the social workers continue to be contacted by individuals for services, et cetera. And when it's necessary, we meet them outside of the bank center and have a brief interaction or um, you know, uh, allow them to give us the paperwork necessary, et cetera. So we continue to be here. We are fully staffed, but we're just not open to the public. And that looks like it's gonna be the long term. Um, the next item I'd like to share is around flu shots. Um, there were a number of questions about that. And the town is not going to be doing a clinic. So we used to do a clinic for the community and also for staff and the town is not doing that. So you will be receiving, we've sent out a flyer um, to um, the town. Uh, it will be arriving in your Amherst bulletin. And we have listed all of the public places, the various CVSs, the hours, the phone numbers, um, so that people can contact those places and go there for a flu shot. So we really want to urge seniors to get a flu shot. That's an important public health message that really um, it's directed broadly to the community, but particularly our community that we serve is please get a flu shot. Um, most of those places, the CVS, Target, Walmart, they will accept insurance. So it's no cost. I've gotten my flu shot. I had all of my kids get their flu shots. So please get your flu shot. Um, the next item um, in terms of staffing, I just want to give you a quick update. We're hoping that Jennifer returns um, mid-September. Uh, right now she continues to work at Puffer's Pond, um, helping out, and it, and it has been, um, you know, a, a wonderful town collaboration. Just as we received help from a number of departments through the pandemic, it was our opportunity to support other adventures within the town. But it looks like I think around September 21, that will come to a close in terms of the staffing daily. And we are looking forward to having her back here because it, um, though I have become uh, more skillful administratively, <laughs> I am not skillful administratively. Let me just say that. Um, I've, I've got a lot of new skills, but um, I would like to give them away again. So I think that that will really help us uh, boost our services. So, and we continue, we have a grant that is supporting four um, part-time individuals to help us with our food operations, which has made a significant difference. Uh, we have a food packer and um, three drivers. Those are individuals who are unemployed uh, that were in the restaurant industry, and it was a grant tailored for that specific uh, population. They are tremendous. They are wonderful. And we're hoping to keep them as long as those resources are available within the state. They do it through eight week allotments. So right now we go through eight weeks and then we, we re up. And, and so we're waiting to see what happens with that. I see uh, Sue, uh, Mary Beth, let me just introduce, uh, I see Susan's, uh, Sue's hand up. I'm mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt Mary Beth. I just got an uh, email from Mary Elmer. And yep. she said, could somebody, sorry, I've lost it. Could some, oh dear. I got it as well. And yeah. she requested a link so she could link in. Somehow we never got the link. Uh, and she's requesting a link to be able to link into the meeting. Yep. If you give me uh, one moment here, I, I could forward it or I could forward it after my report. Let me, let me see. Um, if yeah. you have her email, I have her email as well if you need it. 
If you want to give her the number, it's 986-4698-4265. Yeah, let me, I, I, I'd rather just forward her. It's hard to do this while I am online. You know, you know how this happens? It's like in the, in the heat of the moment. Oh, here we go. Wait a minute. Let me just forward this email forward because I'm hoping she will come up in my, um, in my email list. There we go. It's sent to her. She has the, um, the announcement in the link. Okay. So hopefully she will be, I'll, I'll let you know if I see her pop up as an attendee. Thank you, Sue. Yes. Okay. Um, mobile dates. So we are looking at taking our senior center uh, mobily in the month of October. And so we are setting up some locations within town where we will be holding office hours um, in the community. Uh, socially distanced. So we'll drive our van there, I'll set up a table, and we'll be able to meet people where they are located. So we'll be announcing those locations. I have to work with um, some property managers and also um, individuals in some houses of worship um, to see if there's an opportunity to use their spaces. So I'm in those conversations right now. And I think that October will sort of be our last opportunity to get out there um, and make ourselves known before it gets too cold and people won't come out. The reason we're choosing to do this right now is that, of course, fall brings with it a number of more urgent um, social work support services. So we're, we've been discussing things with fuel assistance. Um, and again, in the new flyer that you'll be receiving, there's information about that. So folks will be um, you know, looking for that information, as well as we will, um, the fall brings with it the open enrollment for Medicare. So we always get a large number of individuals who are looking to either, that's the opportunity to change your plan mm -hmm. or your prescription plan. So we wanna make sure that we are um, making ourselves available because I still think that some people think that we're closed. Um, and so we're gonna continue to be here and we will continue to serve out in the community. Okay, any questions about that? Yes. If any, if any members have um, some locations that they have in mind that might be useful for us to set up, we figured we would do it for a couple of hours, two hours in the afternoon. Um, please do let us know. That would be really, really wonderful. Um, and we'd be happy to participate um, wherever folks feel like there might be a gathering. I have some great data from our UMass Burke truck. So we, we sent them out to seven locations within the community. And we have the data points of where we had the largest gatherings of seniors. And it was actually quite surprising. So we'll be using that to determine those locations as well. But if uh, someone has a request, I'm happy to, to show up and drive and, and see you wherever you might be. All right. Any questions on that? Yes. Yes. Uh, so uh, how, how will the public know that this is available? Uh, it seems like right for a news story or a letter to the editor or whatever it is. How will how does that work? Well, that, that's my next uh, agenda item is communication. So we are uh, partnering with the Gazette and we are doing a flyer now. It will be coming in the Amherst Bulletin. And we will, uh, you'll be receiving one, I believe, around September 25th. And so there will be another one that will be published. It's also going to be on our Facebook page. It'll be on the town website. And certainly we can do a press release um, and, and make that known. I did follow up some of our conversations and spoke with Scott Mers back. And the, um, the way in which we often communicated through the newspaper, um, you know, when they used to do the senior community notes on Saturdays, they have discontinued that. So um, only when there's particularly urgent information will they uh, just try to make an accommodation of an announcement or whatnot. So um, we'll certainly follow that up and make sure that that is well communicated. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also just part of the, you know, the town's outreach um, overall arching plan. So the town will also assist us in that. <clears throat> I'm sure that it's broadcast. So we'll be using the, the town communication methods as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Yep. Uh, Barry Beth, I have a question about that. Um, mm -hmm. Apropos, you'll hear some comments when we get down to the fund development piece, but do we have a way of, of uh, recording who attends those meetings? I like, do send around a sign up sheet and maybe they can put their emails or their phone numbers or something like that when people show up. Because I'm, we're looking for opportunities to find out who accesses our services. I guess the question I have. Yeah. Yeah. So you can when, do it maybe in a tactful way without. Yeah. Uh, no. It, to... Yeah. No. So so we do have a data management system here. So when okay, people used to come here, they had to sign into my senior center, which was that's our, that's our that, that's our repository, and an individual has to be a member where their data points for contacting them would be recorded. When we go yeah. into the community, we still do the same thing, but right. we, we, we don't have our computer with us. We take down the information okay. and then it's entered into the data management system. So, Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Any other questions about that before I move on to just two more topics quickly? I do. I do have one more question and that is, um, um, is, are there, uh, is there a strategy in place for reaching out to specifically to underserved populations yeah, that, that, that's and the groups, topic. social groups? Okay. Absolutely, Pat. Yes. And so apropos of that, that comment, I just want to make sure that everybody on the COA is aware of the town joining an organization. The initials are G-A-R-E. Um, it's a, a social justice and equity movement. It's an alliance of governments. Uh, they, uh, they have some fabulous information. I will forward you the, the um, website, but uh, we are going, the town of Amherst has joined and it's, it's a really um, comprehensive framework for decision making to assure social equity. Um, and so I've begun to dive into those uh, materials and I'm, I'm hopeful that I'll be able to play some role within the town on that uh, issue. I've spoken uh, with the town manager and um, I will play a role in that in making sure that our services uh, go through that lens of inquiry. So if you go on that website, G-A-R-E, and you scroll down to the bottom, there's some really wonderful frameworks that are located uh, that you can download and review. And it's a, it's a great, uh, we had a, a, a staff meeting and, it, and it's a great opportunity to look at, there's a series of questions to ask when you're making any decision to look at what is the impact, et cetera. So um, you, I would suggest it's, it's worth uh, a look and it's the direction in which we will be going and the town will be going. Um, when you suggest around communication, we continue to look at new ways to communicate. We are um, in the process of looking at um, some other e-news letters, et cetera. Um, I think that that's a greater challenge. I, I sense that within our community, there is still um, online access does not afford communication to, to everybody, and particularly the, the way in which we serve a community. We have a much more diverse population. Um, so we're continuing to examine that and look at, at no matter what, we will never um, move away completely from a paper newsletter and also flyers and things of that nature because that is how the majority of our, our community still wants to receive information from us. That's the feedback I've gotten. And then the last thing that I want to just suggest to you is that the MCOA conference occurs October 19th to the 23rd. And I would also uh, address this to um, Liz uh, Welsh. So if you're, if you're still listening, Liz, um, October 19th to 23rd is the Massachusetts Council on Aging Conference. It's held annually. It's the largest gathering. So 350 communities from the Commonwealth gather. It is online this year. And so it's occurring Monday through Thursday, just in the afternoon. So I think it begins at 1.30 in the afternoon. And there are some fabulous workshops. I sent the link to all of you last night, so you could just take a look at some of the topics. But there's such a broad range. It is absolutely fantastic. Um, and the nice thing about it being online is that it's much less expensive. <laughs> so it's $125 for the first person and $100 for uh, any other following staff um, and also Council on Aging members. So if anybody is interested in attending, please let um, Helen know. So Helen McMillan is gonna be doing the registration and we wanna do one registration at a time. So if you could let her know within the next week um, and send her an email or you could call her, 
that would be really helpful. Um, and um, you mean we can cover a number of workshops and, it, and it's everything from social work to dementia care to um, operating a senior center in COVID, et cetera. There's, there are some village to village topics, Liz. So I think that if there's anybody in your community who might be interested to attend, I can make sure that I connect you with that link. Um, but it, it would be helpful to have everybody um, to the extent participate. When I sent the email to you yesterday, many of our veteran members on the Council on Aging have attended before, and I don't know if they want to share what the experience or content was. It was very helpful, I understand, when they were looking at issues around looking at a new senior center. But um, I would encourage particularly the new members to tap into a couple of workshops, even if you dip in a bit. In terms of the budget for that, we would have to make a request to the friends. So we don't have the, uh, the, um, the funds for that within our town budget, but in the past, the friends has kindly supported us in that endeavor. And I'm sure that we could facilitate a conversation around that. So I just want to pause and if there's any conversation or anyone has any questions about the conference um, and how we could coordinate um, some efforts. Two questions from Rosemary and Sue. I would just say that the variety of topics at the conference is very broad. Um, there are things from fundraising efforts to how to um, do arts and crafts workshops to how to build a new senior center to architects for new senior centers. And uh, it's just amazing what you can um, attend. I would really encourage people to look at the topics because I'm sure you will find something interesting and it would be well worth the money. Mm -hmm. Sue? Yeah, I just echo that. I've attended a number of them and it, it's enriched not only my experience being part of the Council on Aging, but also being part of the Senior Center and also just as a citizen of Massachusetts. <laughs> it's, you, you meet people from all, not just Massachusetts, the New England states. And uh, I don't know how it'll be online, but it certainly, it'll be very informative, very helpful, and, and just give you a bigger picture than just looking at what we deal with in Amherst. So I think it's very, very um, helpful. Mm -hmm. So how many, uh, this is Pat, how many st uh, are there, is the whole staff going or I mean participating or uh, does the staff, uh, I looked at the registration for it as as well as the programs. Is there reduced rates if you just there's just one or two workshops you want that really are focused on a, uh, you know a special focus or does the um, how, how does that work? Um, you have to register regardless of how many whether you attend one workshop or every workshop every single day. Okay. You have you have to register. I so see. our staff, our staff attends. Um, Helen, Michelle, the two social workers, and myself. Okay. Um, last year, uh, Helen and I went um, for some select days, but because it's online, um, I, I just think it's a bargain for a hundred dollars. I would encourage all of the members of the COA, and 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 I think that when you look at the workshops, the slate of workshops is particularly relevant this year because COVID has really changed what we do and who we are and how we serve. And I think that, um, you know, I, I have the opportunity to participate in statewide and regional conversations. And, and every week I come away with another idea or another uh, issue that, geez, I never thought of it that way. And I think, um, yeah, again, just because of, of COVID and looking at an extended closure, how we can remain relevant and how we continue to uh, serve people with high quality services, it, it would be helpful. I, I just, I would suggest, even if you attended one workshop or two workshops, mm -hmm. um, I think it's a wonderful endeavor. So um, I'm happy to go to the friends to request that support for you. Okay, all right. We'll, we'll be talking with uh, Barbara Slovin. Uh, Barbara, are you on? Or Mary Elmer? 
One second. I, I would have to, um, if you, I think Mary Elmer is here. Oh, okay. Hold on. It, it, um, she isn't identified, uh, but there's a phone number yes. there. So I'm asking her to, to unmute. Yeah, that's Mary Elmer's number. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. Hello, this is Mary Elmer. I couldn't get on Zoom, so I'm calling in. Can We're you hear me? You. Yes. We're happy. Yes, you can hear me. Okay. Go ahead. So we were just discussing the Massachusetts Council on Aging workshop that's coming up in October. Um, and we've heard from um, some of our veteran members about how useful it's been in uh, deepening their education uh, on issues of interest to seniors, as well as uh, developing connections with folks uh, throughout. Yes, I've heard. Yeah. So, uh -huh. um, I think uh, maybe what what would be helpful. And we know we realize that um, uh, Helen is a is the point person for for us to connect to, and to indicate our interest in attending virtually. Uh, yep. Much more of a bargain this year uh, than uh, going to Cape Cod <laughs> and and paying <laughs> hotel expenses. So that does. Sure increase the, uh, uh, perhaps uh, helps to democratize uh, participation, uh, but there may still be some issues for those who, uh, for, for any of us who, um, uh, uh, for, for whom that's a stretch financially. Um, so uh, once we get that list, uh, we're hoping that um, we can, that the friends, one good way for the friends to support our collaboration and deepen our knowledge uh, would be for us to connect with our colleagues and um, other other volunteers in throughout Massachusetts. So, um, do you have anything to add um, about you know um, what how that's worked in previous years or well the feedback that you've heard from council participants? I don't. I haven't been to it, and I'm rather new to the Friends by a year and a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, so I heard about it for the first time last year, uh, but I I don't know anything more about it. Um, Barbara probably would, but doesn't sound like Barbara's on the line. She's our treasurer. I'm just the assistant um, yes. bookkeeper kind of person. Okay. So um, yeah, but. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, how did it work? And I guess the Barbara would work with Helen as far as who needed financial aid and how we would get it to them and so forth, I would think. Is that right? Yes, I think so. Okay. So probably what we should just do, practically speaking, is simply um, I'm asking all our our uh, council members, if you do have an interest in it, attending, uh, take a look at the, the schedule and uh, identify and, and look and see if there are, are workshops that you're interested in attending. I'm also interested in feedback, um, your sort of critical feedback in where you think that there are things that are missing uh, that you would like to learn about or that you feel that we could use some help with so that we, you know, we're thinking about, uh, we're looking ahead. Uh, always looking ahead. So um, that's also that's also useful feedback. If you're not finding anything you think is helpful to us, I'd like to hear that, and we'd like to hear that. So that, um, but it looks like there's some real good stuff. I've, I have uh, taken a cursory look at the workshops, and there are some. Uh, and I agree with Rosemary. There's some wonderful uh, opportunities there. So where do you where do you see uh, online, where, what workshops are being offered? Where do you go? Ha, has somebody Mary, already said I'll, that and I missed it? <laughs> yeah, Mary, I'll send you a link. I'll send you a link and oh, good. make it clear. Okay, thanks. Okay, sure. so that's on my to do. Okay, good. that's great. Thank, thank you. Sure. <laughs> and then the, just to 
finish this out. Um, just letting you all know that um, I will. I have been um, asked by the town manager to also work uh, with the homeless population. So that is a part of uh, my duties here. And it's been wonderful. I've had a great opportunity to meet a number of seniors um, that we continue to serve in that capacity and individuals who are experiencing homelessness and working to make sure that we have some provisions set up uh, working alongside Kevin Noonan for uh, entering into the fall. November 1 is, is a date that we always keep in mind to try to provide some shelter. Um, we're looking at some new uh, in interesting options in the town um, and looking at some short range and long range objectives. And lastly, if you have nothing to do or you're awake in the middle of the night, tune into Amherst Media because uh, many of the conversations that we have held over the last month or so are, have been recorded. They are on a YouTube channel for the senior centers. We have our own YouTube channel now, and they are also being broadcast on Amherst Media. Those conversations, we're calling them caring conversations, covered a number of topics that were really raised through COVID, everything from healthcare proxies and most forms, how do you execute them, what do you need to know. Um, I also had guests on who were uh, palliative doctors talking about how do we engage our families in end of life decision making um, and help to facilitate those hard and uncomfortable conversations. Um, a geriatrician, Dr. Rebecca Starr that I had mentioned and a number of other topics. Um, we are adding to those um, every week or so. So yesterday we did one about Medicare 101, which was uh, really fantastic, widely attended. And so we're gonna continue those Karen conversations and they're gonna be available on our YouTube channel and also Amherst Media is broadcasting them. The YouTube channel, the link is, is listed on our flyer and it'll also be posted on our Facebook page and website. So that's it. Thank you. Rosemary. Can I just add one thing? Um, there are some excellent programs, yes, I've, and the YouTubes are very helpful. Um, I might mention also that Amherst Neighbors, please join Amherst Neighbors because they also have quite a nice variety of programs that one can join online. So just to mention. That's great. Thank you, Rosemary. Um, Mary Beth, with respect to your uh, additional uh, duties uh, in working with a homeless, what can you t share with us? What portion of your time right now is involved in that? Um, you know, to be honest, I, I, it, it varies from, from week to week. And uh, I think it's, it is a function of um, the seasonal cycle. So, what I can assure you is that uh, I remain present here every day uh, and nothing escapes my attention. So I, I don't think that there's any worry. And I think that if anything, it's broadening our outreach and working with individuals who fall within the ambit of our service, but have not been served quite honestly uh, by us. And it's a great opportunity for us as the senior center to establish even more networking regionally um, and looking at individuals um, who are experiencing not only chronic homelessness, but um, episodic homelessness and financial insecurity. And I think COVID um, has brought that to a new light. So um, I, I think it's, um, it's a positive aspect for us here at the Senior Center. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm here for you, Pat. I'm here, don't worry. <laughs> Yeah. I'm just, uh, I raised that question and uh, we have talked about that a little bit too, but I wanted to sort of, again, democratize that conversation. I think part of the council, uh, council's mission, uh, which is a deep and broad service mission and advocacy mission, uh, we embrace that. And at the, at the same time, uh, we want our executive director to, um, to also um, feel that uh, and and the support our support we we don't we we don't want you to to feel um, that uh, you know you get additional that that there's a kind of kitchen sink you you can do this you do this you do this you do this and and so I think we we want to protect uh, outreach. Uh, for core seniors um, and because you're so skilled and you do so many you have so many 
uh, intellectual and social uh, skills and great heart, um, it's easy to ask you to do it all. And so um, I just, I, th that's, that's the reason for the question. Um, I'm not worried in any way, um, but I do, uh, I, I do um, uh, want to convey a sense of, um, of support, really, for, mm -hmm. uh, for, for the spectrum of things that you're handling. And, uh, and we want to continue to support your efforts. Um, um, and we know that there will be things that you'll learn in that additional assignment that will affect um, all, all senior, seniors in any case. So there's some transferability of skills as well. And Jacqueline. Uh, I don't know if I have the sound on. I was without the video for a moment. But in, in that same vein, I'm wondering if there might be some uh, subcommittees to be supported. And I'm thinking especially of the homeless. I know that um, a person called the Motown Man uh, informed me, we had him on our radio show, and he was talking about the uh, difficult winters that the group behind Walmart has. Uh, and if, if there's a subcommittee where that information could go, it might be useful. He himself um, buys food and prepares meals for, for the homeless that are stationed behind uh, Walmart. I've never been there. Um, and maybe we could touch base with him as well. Mm -hmm. Jacqueline, I, I, I can tell you that I have been there. <laughs> and, okay. uh, and, and I have to say that Craig's Door is doing amazing outreach. And so they have uh, gotten some funds uh, to support cleaning up and maintaining those camps. All right. They deliver water in five gallon jugs with um, pumps on it. They have fire extinguishers that they've lashed to trees. Um, they deliver meals at lunchtime. So um, I, I think that they, they have done an amazing job of outreach to individuals who, who are rough housing. And I'm happy to, to provide more information to those who might be interested in that topic. Um, you know, a number of issues have risen for me in terms of meeting that community of individuals who don't have, have health care. Um, and, and or might have um, status, legal status within the, the uh, country that may make access to services challenging. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it, it's, um, th there's, there's a number of ways in which we can provide some more support and, and also advocacy. So thanks. Good news. That's yeah. good to hear. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Mary Beth, for that update. Um, um, on uh, item three B of our uh, the chair's report on pre of, of the preceding month, um, I decided to just uh, in the interest of time of respecting your time and and my own um, uh, that I, I initiating this um, re report. Uh, just uh, which is, I think, actually um, could also include um, um, any uh, any the activities of any of the members because I know you're all engaged in outreach of some kind, uh, in re with respect to your uh, your involvement um, as a um, a member of the Council on Aging. So I. So I'm not, you've, I've sent this to you, it'll be posted publicly, uh, the report, uh, but I just, a couple of things that I, I just wanted to highlight. Um, and uh, one is um, I did uh, uh, attend uh, virtually um, a, a gathering, a, a town gown gathering, um, and um, uh, earlier, um, uh, this month, and um, there is a COVID hotline, um, and the number there is listed. Uh, when people have concerns, it really any concerns about 
uh, uh, parties where you that you might observe uh, people not wearing masks or issues with uh, inappropriate social distancing, bars selling alcohol uh, without um, without food. <laughs> um, that there's certainly certainly that's been an issue. Uh, so we continue to uh, address that. I think one highlight, uh, one very positive highlight was that um, I sent a letter, a copy of our letter to the um, a Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs and Campus Life, uh, who responded immediately. Um, Brandy uh, Hafner LeBanc is her name. And so um, she loved our letter and she is including a link uh, 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 to, that, uh, uh, to that letter uh, to her, ne her next week's message to students. And, and her words to me were, um, uh, how can people say no to the grandmas and the grandpas? <laughs> <laughs> So I thought that was, uh, I thought uh, it gives her a little bit of moral clout and leverage um, in a positive way with students to really kind of uh, awaken them. I think um, I would, if there is a second communication, I think one thing that I would have added that I hoped we would add, um, and I think I, I got this from our, our conversation uh, last month, and that is, uh, I think it's fair to say that we as town residents commit and promise to do our part as well to social distance and to wear masks. So we're not asking people to do anything that we're not willing to do and are not practicing ourselves uh, because that's good community care and concern. So um, anyway, there are other little details, but um, I found it uh, I hope you find that helpful, and um, so I'll, enough said on that. Um, I also um, sort of transitioning into um, models of leadership and, and also building and echoing uh, some concerns that uh, uh, about our structure um, and our subcommittees uh, that Jacqueline mentioned. Um, what, what I have been thinking about um, really is, um, I guess part is my, about uh, a component of my thinking, and we're at, we're talking about models of leadership here, item 3C, if you're following along, is that um, I took a look at our bylaws. I wanted to see what existed. And um, I've been on, uh, on the council for more than a year, and um, I was interested, uh, I'm always interested when I look at bylaws, how, how useful are the lot by our group's bylaws? And do they reflect the current needs and development? And do they facilitate us building relationships, working on projects that meet the, the need, our stated needs and our stated mission? And it didn't take me long to discover that um, that by the bylaws are part of that dusty <laughs> dusty documents that sometimes just go in a file drawer and that you know uh, the, and it, there's no i'm not saying that there's anything about neglect but we we develop these work, working relationships and what i notice is that there are some things that are obsolete that don't make sense to me for example we're a nine member council the the bylaws that i saw contemplate five different subcommittees, subcommitt five committees, nine people. Um, some of these individual communities, uh, uh, committees require three people on each committee. <laughs> and so you can imagine, uh, I'm thinking, the, where are these people? <laughs> How can that work? W what's up with that? Can we consolidate? So um, I, I rely and, and embrace the deep wisdom of your previous chair, Rosemary Koffler. And so Rosemary and I have been shooting the breeze about all this. And so we, we, would, like to, we uh, would like to invite everyone who's interested to help us. Uh, we're uh, we're going to do a review 
It's not going to go on for 20 years. It's going to be quick. It's going to be just quick and functional. Uh, we're going to look at the by bylaws. So that's one thing. We're looking at the and, and we're going to make some adjustments or we're, let's make put it this way. We're going to recommend to all of you uh, to the all council what we think needs to be adjusted, at least for now. Um, and we can those will be the easy fixes. The part, but I also, we also, so please I'll let Rosemary or myself know if you're, if you're up for that, you're interested in it. The bylaws aren't, it's not a, it's not a long or complicated set of bylaws, maybe three pages worth. Um, so it's pretty, would be pretty easy. And I've already started, and so has Rosemary, I think, in looking at them and saying, oh, we, we need to tackle this. And, um, but the deeper question is this, and it really has to do with all the thinking that I have been doing about um, um, and inviting you also to share in that thinking with me, is um, what, what structures are going to facilitate our work together in support of our mission? That's the core question. And, and specifically around that, is are the structures that we use, um, do, do they, uh, are, uh, are there alternative structures that would be more effective? And so to be, to be blunt, uh, you know, I, I wanna draw upon my experience in different organizations, say with consensus decision-making, we often arrive in this group at consensus we also sometimes, we all know of examples where the democratic process can be used to quell dissent or alternative voice, voices or become oppressive to uh, numeric, numerical minorities. And that's an issue as well. Um, so the, the spirit of this is to be affirming to each and every voice on this council and to so that uh, recommendations that we make to our executive director um, are nuanced and are uh, represent a you know genuine, thoughtful, heartful engagement with the the uh, the problems that we are seeking to address and the opportunities we want to explore. So. That's that's my, that's all uh, all I want to say about that. Except uh, maybe just to invite Rosemary, if you have uh, a bit uh, to add to that, I would welcome Rosemary or anyone yeah. to that. I did want to add a little bit. I um, have long, for a long time felt that the bylaws were not speaking to what how we perform as a council. And the classic example, of course, is the number of subcommittees, some of which aren't even uh, ones that we would choose to have. And how can, how can we have so many subcommittees with nine members? So that was one issue. Um, the other one, um, Pat and I have talked about this for a while. And um, she mentioned the fact that um, she would like to consider a consensus form uh, rather than the parliamentary um, approach that we've always taken by using Robert's rules of order for making majority decisions and taking a vote. Um, when I thought about doing, redoing the bylaws, I thought perhaps I should talk to Emich Marzal, who's, um, the director of the executive office of elder affairs and see whether or not there were any requirements that we should look at or if he needs to know any, they need to know anything about our bylaws and changes. And he said, no, nope, go ahead. You, you just write what you want and you uh, follow accordingly. And there was no problem with that. I mentioned the fact that we were considering a consensus form of decision making rather than following the Roberts Rules of Orders. He said he saw no problem. I said we felt like it brought greater discussion, greater 
opportunity to work together and to voice opinions and better um, decision making and uh, cooperation. And he agreed that, that that could work well for us. So there is no problem there in making the changes. Um, one thing that I do want to point out, though, in reading about um, consensus form is that um, it certainly does protect, protect minority needs and opinions, but by definition, in a consensus decision, it cannot, a decision cannot be made against the will of an individual or against the will of a minority. So that's important to keep in mind. But um, otherwise, we're good to go. And I feel also that it in, increases participation and discussion. And um, yeah, one, one other important thing is that members need to have the information, if there's a topic of discussion, need to have the information well in advance so that they can do their reading, do their homework, and come to the meeting with um, a good discussion. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I'll say one more thing about um, the, the Council on Aging. I, I look back and I realized that I was on the Council from 2005 to 2013. And I was secretary during much of that time. And I see that um, back in 2006, the bylaws did change. I had kind of forgotten that. But I do remember one issue when um, we talked about the fact that the bylaws said that you had to have three members or minimum number of mem members that had to be 60 years of age or older. And we felt that was discrimination <laughs> to, um, to have that requirement for age. So that was changed. But another thing that was also agreed upon at that time is that um, people who were non-Amherst residents could be on the council. So that, although it's not written in the bylaws, um, that no longer is true. And a few really good things came out of the council. I do remember back in 2005 that Maura Plant had proposed doing a survey of elders over the age of 90 and volunteers had a list of questions and we made home visits with members in the community who were 90 years older or older and had very nice interviews with these people very personal, and it was a, a nice way to get information on what services they were using and what needs were unmet. Mm -hmm. um, and um, also back in 2006, they started talking about par parking for seniors, and, in t and nothing much happened then until 2011, thanks to Jack Wollensack, who has done so many good things for the senior center. He's the one that got the parking sticker program rolling. And wow. um, we can all appreciate him for that. So there's a number of good things that have happened over the years. I can't list them all, of course, but um, that was just a little incidental thing I wanted to mention. Thank you so much for that. Rosemary, um, and I see Tim, um, Tim's hand. Uh, just a quick comment and follow up to your 90 year old and group, uh, Rosemary. Uh, I played yesterday, our golf group uh, played in honor of one of our members who's 93, who mm -hmm. still walks the golf course and pushes his cart. So there's a <laughs> <laughs> incentive Love for us all. Love it. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? Um, I, uh, to, to sort of uh, close the circle on this conversation for now, I just wanted to say that um, each of these methods has uh, pros and cons. And I want to emphasize that uh, I'm, I am still wrestling with this. Uh, and then I, why should I have all the fun, right? Uh, so, I mean, so I'll be sending uh, 
uh, Rosemary and I will be sending some materials for you to think about. We'll, uh, uh, do do let us know if you want to help help with let's you know I, I I think we'll we can just start with tackling some of the most glaring errors in the bylaws uh, uh, immediately and we can address that the deeper question may take long and I think we have this right now we have this luxury of time in a sense it's one of the strange gifts of COVID but we are not in a hurry to do deep work together and really look at our purposes and how they match our actions and, 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 and conform with our values or what we aspire to be together um, as we support um, our beloved elders and, our, and, and, and in support of our own lives. So that's where we're gonna go with that. And in that spirit um, and with, uh, the humility, uh, I just keep hearing more and more uh, about uh, the great contributions that um, have been made uh, by people, many, many people sitting around this table actually in so many walks of life. And um, so it occurs to me that one of the um, measures of the health of a, a good organization is really how newcomers are welcomed and how um, and, 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 and that applies to uh, the senior center, that applies to the council, that applies to almost every walk of life, our, our moral or spiritual communities. How are newcomers treated? So I learn from each of you every day I hear things about the projects that you're working on and the interest you have. And so I thought um, I wanted to make a bit of time today to just uh, to hear from some of our more seasoned members on a few topics um, if, if, and if you're ready for those. And I wanted to, uh, so that we're kind of on the same uh, begin to be on the same page. We don't expect uh, the, uh, you know, to probe the entire depth of your experience. But I've asked, um, I've asked a couple of you uh, to step forward, um, if you're willing, um, to just, um, you know, let me just start with um, conversations that we've been having about. Um, uh, a new senior center, and I've I've been hearing from Sue and Rosemary and John and Jack um, about your uh, efforts and um, um, and what's happened in the past. And I'm wondering if you, um, any of you, would be willing to, to let us know where you think things stand now and um, and and what might be ahead. I'm not looking, I'm, I'm just like, where, where are we now in the process? Um, um, and if we could keep it brief, realizing that this is, a, this is a conversation that we will drill down in deeply in coming uh, session, uh, um, meetings, uh, but just in a nutshell, if you could. Sue or Jack. Well, I could say a few words. Great. Okay, first of all, the, all of the records about a new senior center, and I'll go into some of the highlights. The, the records are at the senior center on the um, senior center's computer drive. And so, of course, I don't have access to those. I had some records at home um, that are the newest of which are about 20 and 12. And so anything I say is going to be a bit out of date until I either get to the records on the computer or to some of the paper records which are sitting on my desk or were. Um, I'll go through it as quickly as I can. Um, we have considered uh, several ways of making more room for the senior center. Um, 
These include upgrading the current facility in the bank center, adding to the, the building with new construction and specifically between uh, Johnny's Tavern and the bank center. There's a good sized parcel of land that could be built. Um, both any, anything we do in the current location, of course, is going to be troubled by the, the fact that we have no free parking. Um, we have also considered building a standalone senior center and we've considered uh, building a community center. Um, we have visited about 17 newer senior centers in the neighborhood. Um, and we photographed the interiors and the exteriors and we've talked to the um, directors uh, about their experience with building the new senior center. We've taken those 17 senior centers and plotted their area for each town against the senior population of that town to get an idea of the, um, the relationship of senior population to what actually exists out there in terms of square footage of the senior center. Um, we, let's see, um, William Sterling, one of the, um, see, one of the, uh, the uh, architects that we have had contact with, and one of our two favorites, he has an uh, ag uh, a, uh, algorithm which relates the size of the senior center to and the number of parking places and the site size to the, um, the number of seniors in that particular town. And so that has been very helpful to us in, in designing the, the size of the, uh, of the new structure. Um, what we, other things we've considered for a standalone um, senior center uh, are the, um, the rooms that are needed the arrangements of those rooms, the, the size of the building, the, uh, and the size of the building site. We've also, with um, the assistant director, we have looked at sites around the town. And um, I, those were, we were asked to keep um, secret, but um, the town, the town is, uh, uh, has has done good work in in helping us find sites for a new a senior center. Um, we've considered the the, um, the OPM, the operator, uh, the uh, owners, uh, project manager. We've considered the the building committee. We've considered fundraising, consultants, financing contractors and architects. And the two architects that we most prefer are John Catland and William Sterling. And uh, we have had meetings with them and we've had John Catlin uh, make a presentation at town hall. Um, I've talked to the um, town manager, the assistant town manager, the architects and quite a number of others. Let me see. Um, we understand that um, in the long range capital plan, there's $50,000 allocated a few years from now for a feasibility study. And there is $4 million um, allocated for the start of construction in years beyond that. So anyway, that's in a, in a nutshell those are the kind of things that we've been doing. And keep in mind that this summary is not up to date. It, it's mostly up to 2012. And I would need access to the senior center or at least 
to some of the things uh, on the computer to bring it more up to date. Any questions? Yes, um, I'm wondering, it seems that, first of all, I'm just blown away as a, as a relative newcomer uh, about the, the scope and, and depth of the work that's already proceeded, that, that um, uh, the hours uh, of time and attention and expertise that have already been brought to bear. And, and, I, and I express gratitude to uh, you and uh, to Rosemary and and Sue, um, who have been engaged, I hope I'm not missing anybody. I'm sure there, you've, uh, there are others who are not present in the room right now who, who are all, have also participated. That's an extraordinary achievement. We have to figure this out. Uh, we need to figure out how to get you access. Um, and so um, I'm, that seems to me like a completely surmountable uh, problem. Um, and I think, uh, so th that, that's one thing I would just uh, uh, observe and I'm confident that we can figure that one out. Tim? Uh, okay. Um, yes, uh, I, I certainly support the, uh, the needs and the past discussions, et cetera. I am going to serve as a very, very cautionary voice on this committee about spending much time right now on a new senior center. I just don't think that's realistic, frankly, and I think we should better spend our time in other ways. Uh, the reason I say that is I'm a past member of the finance committee. I was on the town's finance committee for about five years. And uh, it's clear that the, the four current projects we have now have had real, real difficulty in getting approved in this town. And to add another one, the senior center in any short term uh, way is, uh, I think, completely unrealistic, frankly. Um, I think we should spend our time as a, as a uh, council on developing uh, non bricks and mortar programs, et cetera, and not spend a whole lot of time on senior center. Now, that's not to say we shouldn't, but I think we ought to work more on keeping the needs uh, in front of the town officials, but to get down to, to uh, specific details like architectures, locations, square footage, I mean, we've had, as you all know, Coldy, on meeting needs that have been on the drawing board for years, the fire station, the, et cetera, et cetera. Also financially, uh, it's gonna be a real trick for this town to even pull off the uh, four projects that we have. Uh, we're very, very close to state mandated uh, or state caution, or state, um, uh, maximum tax levy uh, uh, abilities, and we have some real, real, real financial. Costs. Now, we all know partly the reason why in this town, uh, many of the other towns, like using Hadley as an example, uh, looking over some of those, the report that was just sent out about their swell of needs, um, true, but they also didn't have the same kind of projects on the drawing board that we now have. So I think, frankly, it's just unrealistic and not worth as much of our time right now to spend really getting into a discussion about a, a new senior center. I think what we need to do is talk about how we educate the town about seniors' needs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it becomes really clear that there might be a need. But right now, financially, I think we have some real, real difficulties being able to pull off the four projects that were really on the drawing board right now. So uh, sorry about that. But uh, I think I just wanted to express that early on. And uh, as we proceed, we I appreciate those kinds of discussions. OK, just no need for apology. Each voice on this, so we want to listen to each voice uh, on, uh, on this council uh, to be expressed. And uh, I see Rosemary's hand. Yeah, I'm, I almost hate to say it, but I do agree with Tim. I think he raises a very good point. And these four projects that he speaks about have actually been, some of them have been proposed for 10 years. So you see where we sit. 
But I do think that um, it should not be a top priority. I think we have many more other important issues to talk about, namely transportation for, for seniors who have um, major needs in getting around and getting to appointments, especially during the COVID epidemic. So that should be almost a top priority for work that we do right now. Um, and there will be other things, but I, I do see that even despite all the work that we've done in the past, that the, the need for a new senior center has to be put aside for a time. I think it would be important to consider, however, um, opening up more space in the current banks facility for extra space for uh, senior activities, but um, a new building is not on the horizon. Thank you. Um, Jacqueline. Question, as a newcomer whose um, knowledge is uh, very limited, I am wondering if there's a formula um, in terms of fund allocation for senior programs and as well as the senior center. Um, and on the overall budget, is there, I don't know, so help me out. And don't consider anything off, off the board. Well, do you want me to, to respond in part? I, I can- well, Go ahead. I mean, I was gonna speak from the finance committee point of view, but go yeah. ahead, Mary. No, but, well, I, I, I just, around the issue of the budget. So the budget uh, that we are supported with from the town is an operational budget and it really you know, just covers staffing costs and a small amount of, um, of money for, you know, supplies and that's it. So I, I don't, you know, I can just speak that that's the senior center budget. And then Tim, you can chime in. Yeah, I was, I was just going to mention there is a long, as Jack mentioned, there is a long range uh, capital plan. And I think it is very appropriate for us and as advocates to make sure that there is in that plan sometime in the future funds available for, for a possible senior center, whether it's a separate building whether it's a retrofit of existing buildings, whether it's a bank center or the high school, the middle school, uh, things like that, but just to make sure it's on the plate. My only caution was for us to spend much time in the short term, uh, really getting into the, the weeds of a brand new senior center, I just think is counterproductive. But I do think it's very productive to keep it in the forefront of town planners, particularly so it continues to be on long range plants, et cetera, et cetera. But as far as I know, there's no specific allocation in the budget town budget for particular things like senior needs and so forth. Uh, um, yeah, I, I, and I'm asking not so much in terms of a brick and mortar center, a structure, but in terms of um, resources, uh, in terms of, of acknowledgement and, rec and, and recognition of the fact that Seniors are here. When one goes on to, say, the computer looking for um, senior-friendly towns or cities, and there are reasons why, and um, there are a lot of things that have to be considered in a town budget, uh, I know. But where do seniors fit in that large schema of things? Mm -hmm. the needs of seniors. So, uh, what I, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, keep going. No, no, I, I think very often there's, a, there's an invisible group, a group that has been invisibilized, I guess, is one of my, uh, one of my seminary professors would have said. And, and, and in, in the larger picture, uh, seniors constitute a critical part of the population. And how is that acknowledged and affirmed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
thank you to all of you who have spoken. Um, uh, my sense of this, the group conversation about this is that it's a really important and rich conversation to have because it, it really speaks to the question of our priorities in the year ahead and what, what we want to struggle with de uh, deeply. And I think uh, the voice, voices I'm hearing, I, 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 um, I, I want to just say that um, also when those, the plans were made and con contemplated, there have also been, there's been new understanding and ac things that have happened historically um, and, and recently that um, also I think can shape, provide opportunities for shaping our planning process in a way that is more democratic, that, inclu that includes voices that were not part of uh, earlier problem solving. New imagination. Um, and Mary Beth has brought some of that new imagination to us uh, uh, already, thinking about it, it's not just about the building, it's not also it's, uh, outreach and connection and community, it's not just about um, a location, it's the quality of relationship, programs can happen all over town, that, you know, so there there are some also some new opportunities for us to think. And so um, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I wanted us to sort of figure out uh, a process for, I can, I'm gonna propose perhaps a, a schedule of, um, uh, of topics that we can, uh, for each of our meetings in the, in, the, in, the, in the months ahead that might give us the time to wrestle with some of these uh, topics. Um, and, um, um, and, you know, um, and, ma and make some recommendations and um, to uh, Mary Beth uh, and, and define some of our own advocacy tasks, because I think advocacy on behalf of seniors is part of our core mission. So mm -hmm. as we struggle over this uh, together, um, and build a trust among all of us, then we will uh, we'll be able to do our, our advocacy, I think, with greater strength, greater unity, and more uh, clarity. So um, I this is an amazing conversation. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm, <laughs> I'm watching that clock and I really want to be true to um, our agenda. And I'm already mindful um, of, um, I had asked uh, Jacqueline to open us uh, with some meditation. I'm going to uh, ask her to help us close with words of meditation. Uh, before that happens, uh, um, I'm just going to ask uh, for uh, just for, for Tim to just speak briefly about um, uh, his thinking on fund development in the long range. Uh, with the acknowledgement that we will, our, my tentative plan as far as to look at fund development um, as a serious agenda topic for our next meeting. And so, Tim, you, you want to, uh, shall we sure. transition next to uh, item 3E in our sure. discussion? Um, yeah, I'd be happy to, I'll, I'll keep this brief, but uh, part of it is related to what we just talked about, too. I think as a committee, uh, we need to clearly, all of us, be on the same page in terms of our priorities, both short and long term, and thus our needs. And then we can then uh, use that to help us with uh, seeking financial funds from and other sources and so on. So that's number one. I think a clear understanding of our own long-range plan, our own priorities is uh, is really key. Uh, yeah, we, we'll be moving forward. And in the fundraising, uh, I'll uh, certainly want to acknowledge the, the fine work the Friends Group has, has done over the years. We want to talk about as a committee how we can enhance that, uh, build together, uh, and I see as a fundraising component, as we'll talk further, uh, multifaceted one of a friend raising, which which is a phrase that you might hear in the in the industry, if you will, uh, where everything from events, knowledge, if once we bond people in this town to the real needs and uh, 
programs of the of our seniors, I think that's very, very helpful. Uh, second, we need a variety of different programs, a continuation of annual support so people who can and should and wish to give very, very small donations but have no ability to give large ones, we should continue to do that if that helps coordinate. Uh, thirdly, a more robust uh, major uh, fundraising effort, if you will, which is a much more individual approach uh, through identification of needs and priorities and individuals who might be able to support us. Uh, considering some component of an estate planning, uh, have citizens who wish to leave this uh, organization in uh, their estate plans, I think could be very, very helpful. And then finally, a, a strong stewardship program, how we keep the supporters, how we keep in touch with supporters, how we uh, uh, engage them in the process and so on is, is and should be really, really helpful. But let me come back to that, that planning uh, component. Uh, we all need to be together, working together. So we have a coordinated effort and um, proceed in that vein. So more to come, but those are some of my initial thoughts. Thank you so much that I'm breathless. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, that um, and yeah, I um, I will well, always be one. Sorry, what, one, sorry, one other thing with, with Liz on the line, how we can work with Amherst neighbors too. <laughs> uh, seriously, uh, and uh, work together in that vein. Maybe we can, maybe that's appropriate, maybe not. But uh, I didn't want to forget that and I, I did. And so now I'm adding it to my list. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. That's, that's really great. So that's just a teaser, folks, for what lies ahead. Um, I, I, I also, have, having been around the block for uh, many years, um, I always want to feel, you know, unity versus, there, there's always a tension between unity and then protecting uh, the voices of, uh, of alternative perspectives. Uh, I always want to just keep that, uh, uh, you know, intelligent people can, agree to disagree sometimes. So I always want to like lift that up and say, yeah, we're, we're going to have, we're going to bring different perspectives, but I want to underscore that uh, honest conversations. Uh, uh, I, I want each person to feel that they can rate that uh, he or she can, can, can express reservations or uh, identify, you know, or say things like this doesn't work for me. Um, so I want us to kind of make make room for that so that we can what we're what we're dealing with is uh, when we do arrive at some kind of consensus, it comes from an honest and authentic engagement with each other and and the, and the facts because we are uh, and you know and what those facts mean to us. We are a microcosm of our community and I hope that we'll become more of a microcosm of our, our of what our community looks like. So each voice is therefore uh, extremely important. Um, okay, um, I know that all of you have had a chance to look at the, uh, uh, the minutes uh, for um, uh, item four in the agenda. Um, and I'm wondering if we have uh, a motion, uh, any comments uh, Sue, go ahead. Uh, there are two errors in the typed minutes. All right. For you to make corrections. Um, on page two, uh, the spelling of Norma Halleck under item D, the representative of Highland Valley. All right. <laughs> uh, her, her name is H-A-L-L-O-C-K, not A-C-K. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, there's another one, sorry. <laughs> um, under Rosemary's uh, polling uh, report, in the first paragraph in, under F, polling place consolidation, um, the word thus should be this oh. in, in the fifth line. All right. This means approximately 10,000. Two, okay. just two errors so it can be accepted. All right. Do I hear a motion to? 
I make a motion that we accept the minutes subject to correction. And um, can I hear a second? Second. All right. All, all uh, in support or uh, all, all opposed? <laughs> all in support, show by your hand. Okay, uh, Jacqueline, oh, I see your hand now. I saw, it. okay, <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, so that the, the minutes of um, August minutes have been approved. Um, and uh, any announcements? I, I would have one announcement that Rosemary is the only person who followed up with my homework to you, which she sent me a fabulous video of Dick walking at a brisk pace, which is posted on our Facebook page. So in an effort to one, inspire our seniors to get out and get as much movement as possible before the cold weather comes. The more that we can encourage them to establish a schedule to move, the better off that they will be supported mentally and emotionally heading into another period of what's gonna feel like sheltering long-term. Um, and also to bring some more life to our campaign for Move and Groove. I wanted you to know that we have, I, I think several thousand dollars that's been donated and I have about $5,000 I've received in grants so far. So we're well on our way to establishing our our ability to democratize information. And I think that that's really an interesting, I, I love the way that you use that phrase. So democratize your exercise and send me a photo or a video of you doing anything. It could be even pushing the Trader Joe shopping cart. Please send me videos to say like, this is something that we value. We value not only your participation and your voice, but we value your body and keeping yourself well. So yes. please help us move and groove. Oh, yeah, that sounds terrific. Uh, okay, and mea culpa. Um, I have been moving like, uh, you know, a blur, but didn't photograph it. So I and I opened my big mouth last month and I haven't photographed myself. So I'm going to correct that today. Yeah. And I hope and I invite everyone else to do that. Uh, that is Great yeah. modeling. You walk with a group. That would be great to get a photo of your group walking. Tim, you play golf, you've mentioned. I'm waiting for you. Anybody who's got some movement going, please please send it to me and I will post it up on our Facebook page. Hey, well, I could take a picture of you walk. I've, I, walk I've seen you move and you're, you are moving around uh, in my world. So I've seen that. Okay, all right. Um, I want to make a correction on the date of our next meeting, which uh, which I um, I was confused about. What, was it the first Thursday that we meet, or the second Thursday? And it's we, you know. But anyway, it's October first. Uh, am I right about that, Rosemary? That we're no, I I think it's going to be the following week, and it doesn't have to be the first or the second. It can be whatever you want it to be. Oh, okay. That's All no, right. that's you know up to you. But oh, okay. um, if we stick in general to maybe the second Thursday, which is what we've been doing. Yeah, that, I've noticed that. So is it, October 8th would be good because it's already the 10th now or the 9th. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Is everyone right reasonably okay with that? That we'll keep it at the 8th as listed in the minutes. I see some yeah. head nodding. Okay. Uh, do let it let me know if you uh, we we need everyone's voice. If if for whatever reason you can't attend, do let me know uh, by phone call or email. Um, and I would like to, before I call for a, a adjournment, I would just like us to take a moment of reflection um, with um, uh, our best Jacqueline to help us uh, ground ourselves in this day and, in, uh, and, and until we meet again in some thoughts that she will share with us. Before I do that, I would like to say thank you. Uh, this has been a meeting. Um, for me, there's been vibrance. There's been dynamism. Um, there's been energy. And the, the practical has been 
balanced by the creative, and I appreciate that. If you would take a moment just to be still and and just listen. You don't have to do anything else. One of my favorite sources is um, Howard Thurman, who, as I said once before, was the spiritual advisor for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And his book, um, one of his books was a regular with Dr. King and and his staff. Um, there's a movie that's out, a documentary on uh, Backs Against the Wall, and you can see part of it on YouTube. It's about him, it's not by him. But today's meditation is let us be transparent. Deliver us from the tempest of our inward churning. Calm our spirits with thy great tranquility, that we may be total instruments in your hands to serve your purposes and share in the work to which we've been called to do in this world. Let us be transparent that your light may not be dimmed in us, and through us no darkness may come to those whose trust we have and whose hands are in our hands. These are the words behind them are the urgencies of the heart. Let the words and the urgencies be a living sacrament placed upon your altar, even as did one who came to share love. Thank you so much. All right. Um, do I hear a motion for adjournment? Tim? And a second? Was, I was doing it by hand, sorry. I <laughs> I, right, I got it. OK. Uh, any uh, a hand of second? Greg? All right. Thank you, everyone. Be well. Thank you. Mary Beth, thank you so much for yes. keeping us uh, lifted up. <laughs> Here we go. All right. OK. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye now. Bye-bye.